for the first 22 years of my life, I would say my career was soccer. You know, along the way I did, while I was playing soccer, I did manage to get a, an engineering degree. So a huge opportunity here to, um, a, a huge contributor to emissions, but also a huge opportunity to do better um, buildings. We know how to do net zero energy buildings and we know how to do them in ways that, you know, aren't necessarily more costly. Um, and so there's just a big gap between the, what's possible and, and what we implement. you can kind of automate these more sustainable behaviors through design. So it's not just automating sustainable behaviors, but you're changing the whole system for how we, how we interact with each other. I totally agree that end use behavior is important, but the, um, but the design behavior has been kind of overlooked and, and understudied and is, is really influential. I mean, these, um, the, if you can automate sustainable behaviors, that changes behavior of a lot of end users. And if you can make entirely new behavior is possible. That is, uh, that's kind of what it's all about, right? One of the thinking traps we fall into is like trying to resolve contradiction when it's not actually there. Um, and so like a lot of times we want to say, okay, if this thing is true, then this other thing is not true, but right. sustainability is not like that. It's not a zero sum game. Um, these things aren't in conflict. One of the things to understand is the context, right? Engineering is about 20% women, which, and very few racial and ethnic minorities. Um, yep. and, and architecture is just as bad. And this is, I mean, it's horrible. It's, it, and it's rooted in the same structural sexism and, and racism that's, you know, we're finding in our other systems. And we just talked about how important design is to end use behavior. Well, if you've only got a certain group of people doing designs, that's going to limit what you view as possible. And again, there's nothing wrong with adding. It's just, you know, what we found in our research. Um, and oh, let me back up a little bit. I mean, what I what I love about this topic, subtraction, is that it's kind of in the same vein as the, you know, the trade-off issue with sustainability is that this fundamental kind of thing that's happening in our brains that's um, influencing the overall sustainability. I think legitimate tensions in sustainability is between limits and growth, right? So it's like there's very real planetary limits um, and, you know, so infinite growth on a finite planet is, is impossible. But you know, it's not really about growth, right? We're, what we really want is, I assume, is infinite progress maybe. Um, and progress can come through adding, but progress can also come through taking away. So um, it kind of helps resolve or alleviate this basic tension that's there as it relates to sustainability. There's this kind of fundamental thought process that's causing us to overlook an entire category of, of change is um, really, really interesting and I think really relevant to our pursuit of greater sustainability. Mm -hmm.